Hello, good evening. So on a Tuesday, I always pop on just to answer a couple of questions if anybody has any that they want to ask me. So I will hang on a minute and see if anyone is around and if anyone has any questions. Let me just check actually that my Wi-Fi is on. No, it's not. So if anyone is there, say hi. Uh, saying I've got poor connection. Can you let me know if you can hear me okay? In fact, let me turn my off. And... Okay, should be okay now. So let me know if you can see me. Um, say hi so I can see who's there. And Oh, hi, Norma. And let me know if anyone has any questions because I'm here to answer a couple of questions. Um, it would also be great if you would share the video so that we can get as many people as possible so that we can get some questions. It would be fab. Um, I will also pop a link to my oh, hang on to the for my book pre-order here. But I'm actually really blown away at how many people have pre-ordered um, the book. I'm very grateful for your support. Hang on. And I don't know if I've said this actually very much. Uh, this comment. Um that I do also give one pound fifty to a mental health charity for each book that is sold. So I've already donated, I've not donated it yet, I've not added it up properly, but it's probably going to be around £150 already to donate, which is nice. So, um, so yeah, so thank you to everybody that has pre-ordered it. Um, I'm really grateful. And also, I'm still waiting for confirmation of when it will, exactly it will land on the doorstep for me to then pop it in the post to you. Um, and hopefully it'll all go run smoothly and according to plan, but you know what these things are like. Um, but I will be emailing everybody who has bought the book, pre-ordered the book, in the next week because I'm going to do a special training with you. I'm going to do something special for everybody that um, has pre-ordered the book so far. The date release on the book, Richard, is, I would say, it's going to be within the next... two weeks um, for the end of September, fingers crossed. So yeah, but thank you for asking. Um, let's have a look. So someone's asked here, have you read the book, The Secret? What do you think about it? I haven't read the book, The Secret. I have seen little bits because it's, a, it's on Netflix, I think, as well, isn't it? As a film or a programme or documentary or whatever. So I, I don't know, so I can't really say. But from what I've heard about it, um, there will be elements of it that I would agree with, as in, I believe that there is something much bigger at play than us. It's not God for me. I know it is for some. Um, it doesn't matter. But I know, you know, the fact that, you know, females can create, um, can grow human beings in their stomach and give birth to them and all that sort of stuff, like, tells me there's something way bigger than than me at play um for some it's like universal mind wisdom and for some it's god as i said so we're linking with that and i do kind of you know i do believe that everything's kind of as it should be so even when i'm suffering and struggling it's a learning for me um and i do trust that things will work themselves out so i think that kind of probably links in a little bit with it but probably just not to the extreme that maybe it implies in that book i don't know as i say because i've not read it um, Phil, you said help me with what? Give me a question, Phil, and I'll answer it. Um, so yes, yeah, so has anyone got any questions they want to ask me at all about anything mental health related? Um, anything, anything about anything? Fire away, ask away. Um, and I know a lot of you do share my posts and my videos. Um, but these are the ones that are, I do really appreciate being shared because actually the more people we have, the more questions we get asked and the more we all benefit, really. Um, so do share it if you find them helpful yourself as well. So I'll hang on for a little a minute and see if anyone has anything they want to ask. 
I do two coaching calls, live coaching calls a week in my private coaching group. One question that was asked in there today, which I will be covering in detail with them on Thursday, but I might just briefly cover now. Oh, that's a good question, Norma. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, is So one of the questions someone's asked is around why do they have anxiety around travel? Well, the reason we have anxiety around anything specific just basically means that, um, you know, we are... I've lost my thought. Oh, yeah, just basically means we have a lot of thought about travelling. We have a lot of anxious thinking about it. That's why we're anxious about it. Or if somebody is anxious about work, or if someone is anxious, whatever it is you're anxious about, it just means you've got a lot of thought about it, a lot of anxious thinking about it. Um... So, okay, thoughts on addiction. Right, so, same way as anxiety works, same way as anything works, right? We have our thinking and we have a whole load of thought that create feelings. Then when we experience those feelings, for example, feelings that we don't like or we're uncomfortable with or that really shows up some level of discomfort for you, we will often then go on to some sort of behaviour that we believe will get rid of that or will temporarily give us some sort of relief. So in a way, somebody drinking alcohol or taking drugs is doing that to give themselves um, relief or what they believe peace of mind in that moment away from that the intensity of those feelings that have come from those thoughts and in a way it works the same way as when I was anxious I would hibernate in my bedroom I would think if I'm in my bedroom on my own under the quilt then I'm okay um that was how I got rid of the, the feelings that was how I believed I could settle myself and it was only ever short-lived, by the way. But that's the same with alcohol and drugs. It's just another version of that. And again, in the same way, it's temporary, isn't it? Because actually, drinking alcohol or taking drugs may give tempor- temporarily relief from those intense feelings. But as we know, we then have a whole load more thought about that. You know, not to mention, obviously, what it's doing to our body. But we then have a load more thought of, you know, that I've done this and I shouldn't have done this. And all the consequences attached to our behaviours. That it, Then the cycle continues again. So to me... In a way, Norma, you know, I believe addiction works in the same way as anxiety. It's just a different form of behaviour to try and rectify or get away from discomfort of feelings that come from the thoughts. So in that sense, you know, the the three principles that I coach, that's why they are helpful also for addiction because the more we understand about the thoughts in the first place, the less intense the feelings and the less we feel like we need to get rid of them or remove them or do whatever we need to do to um, eradicate them. Does going to a psychologist reliving your past life help your past? Does going to a psychologist reliving your past helpful? Okay. um, I am actually a trained psychotherapist. And so I've spent a lot of time with people in the past talking about their history. If somebody wants to talk about their past, then I think it's really important for somebody to listen. However, there can come a point where, you know, when we're talking about our past, we're putting it in our thoughts, aren't we? So if somebody's experienced trauma, for example, the only way they're ever then experiencing that discomfort in the now is through their thinking. So sometimes going over it all, if we don't necessarily want to, can then create a whole load more thoughts about it and have feelings so we can then feel like we are actually almost re-experiencing the struggle or the um the suffering really so is it useful or not in some situations yet will be really is about what feels right for you but I knew in therapy myself that after a long time I felt like I was going around in circles I'd got what I wanted from it in terms of the awareness and I knew a lot more about myself but the thing that wasn't shifting was the anxiety and and that's because actually you know anxious feelings come from anxious thoughts and sitting talking about your anxiety for hours on end 
is actually keeping anxious thoughts right at the forefront of your mind and therefore anxious feelings. So I then realised that that was no longer helpful for me. Do you still use or ever use medications along with managing your anxieties? Richard, yeah, I did. Um, I had um, medication for a long time. When I was initially hospitalised, I was put on all sorts of stuff, like to the point where I was pretty zombified, to be honest with you. Um, I do believe they have their place. I don't regret taking them. If I ever had to take them again, um, then I would not beat myself up about that you know if my wisdom told me or my gut told me I needed to go on them then so be it you know they can they can help us when we're feeling really stuck and in a cycle they they, what they did for me is gave me that little bit of more clarity of thinking the breathing space to then be able to explore what was actually going on um and again when people explore these three principles say with me or with whoever often I will get asked like should I be on medication should I stop medication And actually, I would just say you will know when the time is right to come off them because you will be thinking completely differently. So if actually you get to any point where you're on medication, but you want to come off it, but the thought of that scares you, then it doesn't sound like it's the right time. Always do it via your doctor. um, And, you know, don't beat yourself up for it if you do. I, you know, yeah, I've had everything. Talk a bit about that in the book, actually. Like, you name it, I've tried it. Oh, why is my thing turned round? Oh, there we go. Laurie, how do we join your other coaching group that you mentioned? Um, I will... I don't know if I can pop it in here. Let me see if it's on here for me to do. Let's have a look. Clipboard. Let me see if I can find it in here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I've just popped the link there. It's a monthly membership um and you can come and go at any time so if you come for one month and it's not for you then you can leave there's no pressure to stay i do two live coaching calls a week answering all of everybody's questions and there's also loads of pre-recorded videos in there um including an anxiety course that i've done there's one in there for younger people as well so there's loads of stuff loads of resources for you to access in there um and it's a lovely bunch, a lovely bunch of people. We have a private Facebook group. Some people will ask their questions openly in the group. Some people will private message them to me because they don't want to, um, you know, they don't want it to to be seen and they don't want to attach themselves to that question. That's fine. I still answer it. I just keep it anonymous. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, Richard, that's like me now. I'm on meds now and feel like a zombie most days. Okay, so if you... If your gut instinct is telling you that it's not right for you as it is, please go back to your doctor. Oh my God, the dog's just been out and come back. Go back to your doctor and say that you, you know, you're uncomfortable with feeling like a zombie because there are different things they can try or they can lessen the dose or, you know, there's lots of options. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to put up with it if it's not, if it's not helpful for you. Go back and get it reviewed with your doctor. Okay. And also, I don't know when you started to take them, but sometimes it can take a while for you to get used to them. I did feel quite spaced out at first, but then my body obviously got used to it over time and and actually then I didn't see any difference. So, um, so yeah, go back to your doctor and say, just say what you've said there and say that you you don't like it and can they do something about it? Because there are definitely options. Oh, it's got that. Nice to meet you. Oh, we went the event. Is that where I saw you last week? Hi, Mark. I can't see the picture. It's really small and my eyesight's not great. Um, but hi. Okay, so has anyone got any other questions before I disappear? So when I talk about the three principles a lot, and if it's not something that you've explored, it just sounds like, I don't know, some sort of training or format that it is, but it's not really about that. It's it's not a prescription in terms of... It's not a prescription in terms of do this, this and this and you'll feel better. It's a description. It's a description about how human nature works. And the three principles are actually mind, thought and consciousness. But don't worry too much about the wording or, you know, it's just words at the end of the day. But the key things that turn things around for me 
with these three principles. If I look back and think, what changed it? You know, after trying every type of therapy out there, even training in lots of therapies, medication, exercise, uh, oh, just you name it, I, like literally everything I tried. I've said this before, I even had like a little electrical device that I ordered um, that cost me £500 and you put clips on your ears and apparently it sends stimulation or um, shock waves to your brain to um, to relax you. Like even, literally, when I say I've tried everything, I bet I can top trump anybody on what I tried. And yet it was the most simple things that made the difference for me. And the two two biggest things out of it that changed my relationship with anxiety massively was one, understanding that my thoughts 100% of the time created my feelings. So anxiety just didn't happen to me. It isn't something that just appeared. You know, I didn't just suddenly start shaking and feel sick and feel anxious from nowhere. It was coming from my thoughts. And I didn't always recognise that because it becomes such a habit that I didn't even notice that any amount of thinking that was going on. And I started to really then see actually just how bloody busy my mind was. So that was the thing, understanding that, not just on an academic level, but on a really knowing it and seeing it for myself in here. And the second part is resilience. When I was feeling anxious or overwhelmed, I started to really, really distrust my capabilities, my resilience. I would feel that I would need things outside of me to be okay. You know, like if I go to this place, I might have a panic attack and I won't be okay. But actually starting to realise that whether I have a panic attack in the comfort of my own home, in my own bed, or in the middle of the Antarctica, my body's going to deal with it in exactly the same way and I'm going to survive it. So it was really building back up that trust in my own inner resilience, knowing that I was okay underneath all of that noise in my head they're the biggest things and you know I said time and time again I don't I don't you know and this is why when I've written this book it's not in this book for me to say oh I'm now perfect and I never get anxious of course I do because I'm human but the difference is I don't fear it because I was totally anxious about getting anxious the thing the only thing I ended up being scared about was my future with anxiety so it became a massive focus and actually um, I don't have that same relationship with that feeling anymore because it doesn't scare me because I know it's actually harmless and I know that for some people if you especially if you're feeling anxious at the moment you'd be thinking f off like it's harmless it's awful actually it's exactly what our body should be doing when we're telling it we're in danger it isn't going to permanently damage us it doesn't mean that we're broken but actually um the more we see that the less the less attention we give it, really. So let's have a look what we've got here. Drugs is a massive part of it, but on the other hand, oop, you can't go smashing pills and coke all weekend and then come Monday, Tuesday, complain you're depressed and not depressed. When I come down, people say they're depressed but just not willing to deal with the problem. Yeah, and everybody's different. And some people will say that they're depressed and stuff like that and, yeah, actually will be taking drugs or drinking alcohol. You know, alcohol is, is a depressant. <laughs> But sometimes people are doing that because it is a vicious cycle and the minute they're not on anything, then they start to get really anxious again. And it is a vicious cycle. Um, but you're right. Uh, I'm looking to gain tools and reduce meds to better stability with my he mental health. So I'm intrigued to read the book from your experiences. That sounds like me with panic attacks. I would hide away but still have a panic attack. Okay, Richard, I think you'll find it really helpful then. I've put the link in the comments if you wanted to pre-order one. But yeah, that's exactly what it was for me. And actually, it's realising that it's not anything external to us that creates the panic attack. It's our thoughts. And so in the same way, it's nothing that fixes it or gets rid of it other than our thoughts settling. You know, so I would tell myself, oh, if I go and lie in my bed for 10 minutes, I'll settle or... You know, if I was out and about feeling panicked, I think, oh, as long as I can get home, I'll be all right. And that was a, a real misunderstanding in the belief that things outside of me had an impact on my level of panic. And actually, I could have sat in an empty room and built myself up into a complete panic attack quite easily. Um, because it's not about the environment, the people, the situation, the noise, although we believe it to be in the moment, it's not. It's our thoughts about it. So, yeah, so hopefully um, you'll find it helpful. And if you do get it, Richard, and you read it, I'd love to know what you think about it or anything that you see differently that you didn't see before. So 
Someone's saying here about doctors. You need to talk to someone who you trust, not a doctor. Unfortunately, doctors don't always have the training in mental health. Actually, do you know, even as a trained psychotherapist, I still didn't quite fully get it until I'd sort of experienced it and then came across this for myself. So, And it wasn't through want of trying. It wasn't because I was ignorant. It wasn't because I didn't want to understand. I just didn't know at that time. And so actually a doctor that is training in an area to cover everything, um, then they're not going to fully understand how it works. Um, so you're right. It's it's really for you to explore and what's right for you. And just to keep going if you're not happy or you're not content, just keep exploring and keep looking because you will eventually come across, you know, you will eventually have insights that, that change it for you and make things easier for you. So, it's all right. So, yeah. So, okay, I'll leave it there. Hi, Katie Cummings. Hi, Katie. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave that there and um Okay, brilliant. Um and I'll be back next week and to answer any more questions that you might have next Tuesday. Okay, I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.